One of the easiest ways to figure out if you need a system is if it's a repeatable task. So not only is it something that you do often in your business, but also like we said, something that you could hand off to someone else. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Take Back Your Biz Summit, where I'm chatting with industry influencers on how they have found more freedom, growth, and joy in their business by taking back what matters to them. I'm your host, Lauren Black, creative strategist and owner of Bosscation, a business retreat in a box to help entrepreneurs get away from your daily distractions to strategically plan for your business. So thank you so much for joining this summit. I hope you have signed up for the giveaway at takebackyourbiz.com. We have a massive giveaway with tons of amazing prizes from our guest influencers. And we also have the Take Back Your Biz Challenge coming up the 7th through 9th to help you take back your business and take action steps there. So without further ado, I'd love to introduce today's speaker. So Addie Ganley, hi. Hey everyone, so happy to be here. Yes, thank you so much. I'm really excited to have her here. Her topic is a good one that I totally need. So Addie started her business in 2011, mostly as just a hobby, sharing how her family saves money. And that turned into a business that is now a six-figure business. And she's cut back and able to work 18 to 20 hours a week in order to run that business. And so she shares with entrepreneurs and small business owners how you can save time in your business and structure things with systems and how to keep your business flowing and organized, which is so important. She's a mom to three boys and loves being able to be, loves being able to be at home with her kids while running her business. So welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. So Addie will be sharing with us how to take back your systems. So we'd love to hear first just a little bit of why you think this is important. Yeah. So like you said, when I started my business, it started as a hobby. And after a couple of years, I kind of started thinking, okay, well, if I'm spending this much time away from my family and my real life, like I need to be committed and see where this is going to take me. So, um, within a couple months, it quickly went from like a hobby to a business. And I was kind of shocked because I didn't know that you could make a business out of a, out of a blog or what I was doing. And I started realizing the time that it was taking me and the time that I was missing my family and how many hours I was putting in. And it quickly just like took off and it surprised me because I'm like, whoa, wait, is this what I want? Like, am I building a business? Do I have the time for this? And I started realizing like I needed to not only set boundaries, but create systems that would allow me the freedom to not have to sacrifice my family life or my business mm -hmm. life and kind of put them both together to be able to enjoy both of them for myself. Yeah. Well, I think that that's awesome that your path found you, that you weren't even trying. So it was just kind of a blog that you, you know, a passion project of yours. Yeah. So at the time I had a one-year-old and a six month old baby, and I kind of was just looking for an outlet to share how we were saving money. I heard someone one day mention about a blog. I didn't even know what they were. So I hopped on, I created this site for fanatic.com and I kind of just shared like what we were doing and how I was saving money and how we live this frugal lifestyle. And I just needed a place to almost like connect with people. Cause mm -hmm. before that I worked in a small business and I quit to him with my boys and it was kind of all new being a new mom and kind of not working. So I just wanted a place to share that. So it just started as a hobby, as a place where I would just like write posts and share them and use Facebook at the time. And I just really, really enjoyed it. And I wasn't never really was looking for something. I wasn't mm -hmm. trying to turn into a business. I kind of just like, wow, this is really cool. I'm really passionate about this. I want to share what I'm doing. And then I kind of started getting questions from other moms and other people online, like, Hey, I want to do what you do. Teach me what you do. And that's where it kind of led me to this business aspect that I have now. Okay. So you still have frugal fanatic as, is that more just a, a blog and is that monetized? It is monetized. I kind of use frugal fanatic. I call it like my guinea pig for everything. It's, it's mm -hmm. actually like my baby. Cause that's where I started online and I still run it today. And that's where, um, and everything that I teach online when it comes to like business and strategies and Pinterest and affiliate marketing, I've tested and proven using frugal fanatic. And then I teach it on my addyganley.com site. Great. And you do have a background in education, right? So you can kind of yeah. tie that in. Yeah. yeah, that was actually, it was like a running joke for a while because I have um, a background in education and I have my master's in business. And I was kind of oh, like, wow. wow, what a waste. I'm not using either one of them. And now it's kind of collided where I'm teaching on business and it kind of all fits together. Yeah, that's perfect. So what are some ways that people can take back their systems and take back their freedom through using systems? So when it comes to the online world, I feel like you can easily get 
sucked into wanting to do everything and all the things and you kind of need to start to prioritize. And I learned that the hard way that I was spending a lot of time and I felt like I was always trading dollars for hours. I didn't have a system in place. I didn't have a way to make money like behind the scenes or on autopilot. And I felt like I kept seeing like other people doing this and I was so frustrated. Like, why can't I do this? Like why I feel like I'm wasting all this time. And I kind of got stuck since I started with a blog in like this tunnel vision of blogging where I did the same tasks every day and I was working in my business and I started to realize like, okay, wait, if I want to grow, I need to be doing other things in my business. And the only way to do that is to create these systems. So I started really small and I just tried to figure out things that I could almost remove myself from. Like, what, what could I do that I didn't have to physically be present on my computer to do this task. And so the first thing I started with my system was actually with like my blogging content. Cause that's what I knew how to do. That's what I did to grow my blog. And I just created like a small system of a workflow of how I'll create content when I post it, what happens after I post it so that I could duplicate that process the next time to save myself that time of trying to figure out everything again and again. Right. So what are some systems that we could put in place? Like what, what did that look like to systemize your blog? So one of the things I started using is Asana and I always sit down and I do like a brainstorm session where I just like literally brain dump every activity to complete that one project or task. So for example, like writing blog content, I, not only do I do some research, but I have to outline it. Then I have to edit it. Then I create the graphics. And so all of those things make up your system. And even though it seems like it's second nature where it might be easier. And you're like, Oh, I can just do this really quick. I said that to myself so many times where I'm like, Oh, I'll just do it. I know how to do this. I don't need to pay someone. And then it took me so much more time because I didn't have a system in place. So I feel like for anyone who's starting just like brain dump everything that you do and put it into an order. And I actually use Asana to create little checklists so that every single time I just copy the checklist, I go through that checklist and then I can move on to the next project. So that every single time I create new content, I have that exact same template to use over and over again. Which is so great and helpful. And then if you were to hire a team member to take over any of those tasks, you already have it already to hand over to them. Yes. It makes it really easy. And not only that, it's easier to explain the process for someone. So not only can a VA go through all the tasks, they can easily see what I expect or how I do it or how it should be done. And it makes the communication process a lot easier. Definitely. And then things aren't being missed. You don't have to micromanage as much because it's already in place. Yeah, that's yes. awesome. It, it just makes it so much easier. Yeah. Now, what about, you know, systems for finances? Do you have anything for that? So I've created a bunch of different systems within my business. And at first I was kind of, kind of hesitant because I thought like, oh, this is going to be so much more work. It's going to create more work for me to do this system. And I've actually realized how much more time I've gotten back. And even with finances, like finances isn't always the most fun activity in your business. And I feel like it's something that I would put on my to-do list and I'd put on the next day and then put on the next because I kept pushing it back. And I realized having a simple system of like certain days of the week when I will go into my QuickBooks and I will do certain tasks, certain days that I will make payments, certain days that I will like balance things or go into my PayPal has made that system easier so that when it comes time at the end of the month to like get everything in order, it's already been done. So not only does it free up my time, it actually makes the process so much simpler. That's awesome. And, you know, I think one thing that could have saved my first business that, which I I, I definitely could have saved it, but I found this new direction and I'm so excited to be doing Bosscation. But, you know, looking back, if I had wanted to kind of salvage what I had started with uh, Legacy Loft, my design business, it would have been putting those systems in place. And that's something that I had zero systems. And, you know, I did hire some designers to work under me and, to help out with my social media and I didn't have anything in place. So then when it came time to hire them, I was scrambling to try to put together documents that show kind of my process and I was forgetting steps. And so later I'd have to go back and be like, Oh, I also need you to do this for SEO purposes. And, um, you know, so even on your website with the adding to that blog list, it seems like so second nature, as you said, to like, you write a blog, you create a graphic, you upload it, you know, doesn't seem that complicated, but you might forget things like, oh, you need the SEO keywords and what tags are you going to include on your, you know, blog post and putting the images in so that they're Pinterest ready so that when they pin it, it has the description. Those are all the little things that people tend to forget. 
Yeah. And not only does it make it easier then, but think of it in terms of like when you have like a really big project or maybe you're launching a course or launching a new program and it comes time to relaunch, you already have like a system in place and you have this standard operating procedure that you can just go back and be like, oh, okay, I can do this. And I need to do this three weeks out. I need to do this two weeks out. And it just creates an entire timeline so that you're not wasting that time every single day being like, oh, what should I do today? Or what should I have to do? Or how did I do this last time? So you have that system so that you can go back and you can edit the process as you go and update it. It just allows you to have so much more time every single day because you know exactly how to do that one task. Right. Now, what all do you know that you need a system for when you're creating these? So for creating a system, one of the easiest ways to figure out if you need a system is if it's a repeatable task. So not only is it something that you do often in your business, but also, like we said, something that you could hand off to someone else. So a lot of times I know people think that their business is them, but technically like if you are constantly working in your business, you're not going to be growing it. So you need to know like the tasks that you do on a daily basis, the tasks that are repeated, um, the ones that you go through and every single time you're kind of frustrated, like, wait, why aren't I getting the same result? Or why is this taking me longer this time? Or how could I make this easier? That's when you know you need to implement a system. Definitely. And do you time track as well with that? So I do. I'm, I'm a big planner and I like knowing all that kind of stuff. And I'm kind of a, a nerd when it comes to stats. So I actually use toggle. Um, it's a free extension that you can just download on your computer. So anytime I sit down on my computer to work, I turn toggle on and I see how much time it takes me. And I do that a lot whenever I'm, um, starting a new project. Cause I want to know how much time did this take me? And mm -hmm. is it better for me to hand it off to someone? They might be able to do it faster or better than me. And I won't know until I actually see, cause sometimes you sit down and you're like, Oh, I'm just going to work an hour. And next thing you know, it's been four hours and you could have handed that off for someone for a cheaper or lower rate. And now you've just wasted four hours yourself when you could have been spending that time on something that was more important in your business. Right. Yeah. Handing things off to people who do things faster, better, stronger than you is one way to add that freedom back into your business, which is something that I have been implementing in Boscation. And it's been really freeing because, you know, certain tasks that you hate doing too, that you know it's on your list and it's going to cause a bottleneck keeping you from the next task. Those are the things that you just need to hand over. Yes. And it's hard. It definitely is hard sometimes to hand things over, but in order to grow your business and to take back your time, because you don't want to be the one who's putting in 60 to 80 hours a week. You want to have the time to spend on projects. Maybe it's within your business. Like there might be things that you love, or there might be a passion project that you want to do and you can't get to because you don't have an extra time because you don't have the system. So it's just having those things in place so that you can spend the time on new creative projects or spend the time with your family or not having to sacrifice that kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. Now you have mentioned Asana. Do you have any other programs that you use or softwares? Oh, you mentioned toggle too. Mm -hmm. that, um, you know, maybe anything for your social media or for lead generation or clients, you know, onboarding that you use. Um, so I use Google drive a lot. I use that for everything. Cause I feel like it's just easy to access with my team. Um, I also use Slack to communicate and Asana, like I said, and then I use for social media, smarter Q. So we have a system in place for whenever I have new content that's coming out or promotion. Um, we have a system for how that goes into smarter queue, when it gets posted, when we turn it off, when we turn it on, where it gets shared to make it just so much easier whenever we're doing anything new. Yeah, that sounds so easy. I was using smarter queue for a little bit, but then my business model shifted and I started Boscation. So I decided I didn't need it anymore for my old business, but it's definitely something that as I grow, I'm going to look back into because it is nice not having to think about, you know, oh, I should re, re, repinning or not repinning, but reposting about my blog post that I wrote three months ago. And instead of having to manually think about that and do it, you just plug it in and it does it for you. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of times that's something that systems help. Like not only is it growing your business and doing those things on autopilot, but it's always, it's already like freeing up that mental space where you're not like freaking out and I'm stressed and I have to get this done. And you have that task in the back of your mind because you know, it's working with that system that you have. Yeah. Especially on tasks that you kind of dread doing. Like you said, finances, yes. most people don't really like doing finances, but if you have a way that makes it easier, then you're not going to get so, you know, you're not going to procrastinate as much. You're not going to get so bogged down by it and you'll be able to overall enjoy your business a whole lot more. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what has been one pivotal, pivotal or impactful moment in your business and how have things changed? 
So for me, this was a couple years ago and I don't remember where I read it, but I remember reading about being the CEO of your business. And I kind of felt at that time, like, yeah, I'm the CEO. Like I got this. I know what I'm doing. And I kept reading. I'm like, wait, I am constantly working in my business. I'm never working on it. I, again, like I said, I had that tunnel vision where I did the same tasks and I was kind of just in a state where I was maintaining what I was doing. I wasn't growing. I wasn't thinking beyond my blog. I wasn't figuring out like, how can I better serve my audience? Am I going to create courses? Am I going to offer services? Like I was just stuck in that place. And I remember reading that and being like, wait, that's like a light bulb moment for me. Like I'm not the CEO. I'm just like an employee of my business and something needs to change. And I feel like that was a pivotal moment where I was like, wait, if I'm going to do this business, like I need to be growing it and I need to get my time back where I'm focusing it on the most important projects and not just in this day in day out. This is what I think I should be doing, or this is what everyone else is doing. So I should be doing that. And instead it kind of like had that light bulb where I'm like, no, like I need to be the one to like, take charge of this. And I need to be the one who's going to work on my business and grow it and do these activities that are going to help me get to the levels that I always felt like I wanted to be at, but never really tried to go to. Right. And now you're able to work just 18 to 20 hours a week. So how did that even, you know, come into place? Was that over time or did you just, when you, you know, you have three kids, so did you decide with the third one, it was time to cut back? Like how'd that come into place? So I feel like for me, it was kind of more of like a natural progression. So I knew Obviously I, I quit working in a small business to be home with my kids. So I knew I wanted to build a business around my family. So I always had this mentality like, okay, my family is first. And at first I kind of was like, well, it's either my family or it's my business or I either do this or I can't do that. And I got to this place where I felt like I had like this push pull and I had to figure it out. Um, so once my, my third son did come along, it's like, okay, wait, I have no free time and everything I do has to be very, very intentional. Like I can't be sitting on my computer like on Instagram or on Pinterest and like, I need to be intentional. So that's when this whole notion of, okay, I need systems because if I can't physically be present, what's going to be happening in my business or how can I only work 18 to 20 hours while still enjoying my family and love what I do and not feel like it's like a job or work. Cause I, I really do. I know I feel like a lot of people laugh when I say this, I actually look forward to getting up and sitting down, like working at my computer. Cause I just love what I do. And it just became a natural part where I'm like, okay, I don't have to give this up. Like I can figure out a way that I can build these systems. I can put in three to four hours a day and still be happy with my progress and happy with my home life. Right. And now do you have kind of a combination of offerings that you, you know, and different kind of business models that you have? Yeah. So I feel like I've played around with a lot. Um, one of the biggest things that helped me to grow my business and to implement systems was affiliate marketing and Pinterest. And that's where like my main focus came in is I realized, okay, I can't be available to do one-on-one -on -one services. I don't have the time for client work at this time. So how can I serve my audience? And that's where affiliate marketing came in. Cause even like a couple years ago, I didn't even have the time to create a product or a course because I had an infant and it just wasn't going to work out. Um, so I kind of turned to affiliate marketing. And that's where I kind of started to build my business and started realizing, okay, well, this can happen. I can earn money on autopilot. I can have these systems in place where I'm not only generating leads, but there can purchase something that I'm recommending. And it kind of flowed really, really well with my business. Yeah. I love that. Cause it's something that a lot of people don't think about when you think of a business, you think of, you know, direct sales and you think of retail and services and coaching people and courses, but not always that that affiliate income. And did it take a while to build that up? Yeah. So when it comes to affiliate marketing, it's not something that happens overnight. And I feel like a lot of people have this kind of like this negative connotation with affiliate marketing because it's been done the wrong way. Um, but you're definitely laying a foundation to build these systems and these strategies that are going to work for you three months from now or six months from now. So I have content on my Frugal Fanatic site that I wrote two years ago that's still earning me money consistently month after month. That's awesome. I love that. I need to start implementing more <laughs> affiliate marketing. So um, how do you kind of balance, especially with working so few hours compared to what I work and a lot of business owners work who overwork themselves? Um, you know, how do you find time to plan ahead and to, you know, work on your growth? So I learned that for me, at least, there's no really, there's no such thing really as balance. Like there's always going to be a push and pull and there's always going to be something that either gets left behind or gets pushed to the back. So I have found that the most 
productive way and the most effective way for me is to make the time. So I would always sit back and be like, okay, yeah, maybe I'm going to do that course one day, or maybe I'm going to do this project. And I kept pushing it back because I never made the time to do it. So for me, it's actually time blocking in my schedule and making time where I'm like, okay, three hours this week is going to be devoted to this activity that's going to help me to grow my business or it's going to help me reach my revenue goal. So you really just have to set aside and say, okay, I'm going to do this. It's a priority in my business. This is what I need to be doing. Otherwise I'm not going to ever reach my goal. Cause I know a lot of times people set a revenue goal. Maybe it's like, I want to make $3,000 a month. And then they never actually do the activities that are going to lead them to make that $3,000 a month because they didn't make time for it. Like, yes, mm -hmm. I want to do it. Yes, I'm determined. I, I'm going to do what it takes. But if you're not doing those activities in your business, you're not going to reach that goal. So for me, it was actually setting aside time blocking and being, okay, I'm going to spend the next three hours in this project. And then next week I'll spend another three hours until I reached um, like the end and I could actually accomplish that goal that I wanted to do. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're really good at prioritizing your tasks. <laughs> so how do you determine, you know, what you work on during those three hours that you're planning or how do you determine when you're not during doing those planning hours, like, you know, what your schedule looks like and what you're working on? So for me, a lot of times I work backwards. So like I said, if maybe my goal is to get like a thousand new, um, audience members or a thousand new subscribers. I always work backwards for it and I figure out, okay, what's the most important thing I need to do to reach that goal. So without having that goal, then I'm kind of just like endlessly working on projects that are kind of not meaningful to my goal. So I always work backwards and have that goal. And then I set aside like, okay, I need to do these 10 projects, which one is the most important to reach that goal or which one like and come up with a chronological order and then go through those projects that way. So I, I run my business on 90 days and then I do sprints within my business a lot. So I really, really like planning. And the only way to do that is by having that end goal of what I want to do. Cause a lot of times people are like, yes, I want to grow my business or yes, I want to grow my audience. But if it's not like a quantifiable, specific, clear goal, then you kind of are just like doing these tasks that aren't going to help you reach that goal. Right. Now, do you have kind of one overarching goal for every 90 days or a bunch of smaller goals? So I normally will set an overarching goal and then I break, break it down into smaller ones so that I know that I am actually not only staying on track, but I'm reaching those within 30 days, 60 days and 90 days. Cause when you have one big goal, not only is it overwhelming, but it's kind of like this daunting thing, like, Oh, I'm never going to get there. But if you can break it down and be like, okay, well within 30 days, Maybe I want to get 250 new subscribers, which means I need to do a webinar or a collaboration with someone and just really break that down. It's not only does that motivate you to keep going, but you can actually see the progress that you're making. Yeah, definitely. So I know that you do have a free resource actually that is about these 90 day goals and taking action. So while we're on that topic, I'd love to hear um, a little bit about what that is. Yeah. So I created an action planner that will walk you through how to not only create that goal, but then how to break it down. Because a lot of times people get really overwhelmed trying to reach this big goal, whether it's a revenue goal or um, like I said, building your audience. So it breaks it down so that you can figure out exactly the projects you need to do, the tasks, and then even into individual sprints. So it makes it really organized and simple to fill out so that you know exactly what you're going to do over the next quarter. Awesome. That is a great free resource. So everybody make sure you go download that at adaganley.com forward slash action dash plan. So, and we'll have that in the show notes, but I just wanted while we were on that topic to throw that out there. So we do need to wrap up soon, but I wanted to end with one final question for you. So what is one way that people can take action today on taking back their business? So one way I would say is to take a couple minutes and just brainstorm how you can create one simple system in your business. So it doesn't have to be extravagant. You don't have to use Asana or Trello or any other um, like high tech service or anything. You just need to brainstorm it, make a small order, and then you can even put that into like Microsoft Word or um, a Google Doc so that it's almost just like a template or a checklist for you to use the next time. And when you go to use it the next time, you'll realize how much time you're saving every single time you replicate this task. That's awesome. And I suggest for everybody to find an accountability partner to do this with, because, you know, sometimes that's what it takes is keeping each other accountable to say, Hey, like, did you stay on track? Did you follow your system? Did you implement that? And, um, you know, working together towards that goal. Yeah, definitely. And it makes it more fun when you have yeah. someone else to go to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So thank you so much, Addie. This was so helpful for so many systems that we can put in place and so encouraging to see how we can take back our time. And, you know, so many people are 
workaholics like me and <laughs> I'm building Bosscation to be different so that I can take back my business and you know systems are definitely something that I'm even more encouraged now to go you know implement in my business yeah well thank you so much for having me yeah yeah well it's been a pleasure so where can we find you online so you can go to addyganley.com or just use the handle addyganley on any of the social media platforms. Awesome. Perfect. And frugal, frugalfanatic.com okay. is my original site. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And Addy has so graciously donated to our massive giveaway. So you could win if you sign up at take, take back your biz.com. You could win a content upgrade maker mini course so that you're able to find it an easier way to put together your content and um, just outline that. Is that, can you explain a little bit about that one too? Yeah. So it'll help you create almost a small system for your lead generation process. So it's happening on autopilot. Awesome. So make sure you sign up for that in the giveaway and see all of the speaker videos at takebackyourbiz.com and join us for the challenge November 7th through 9th so you can take back what matters to you. So that's all for today. Thank you. See ya.